Let's talk to this bloke who entertains every week, and they all listen to him, you know. They yes. all love his stories about Ipswich. The oh, mayor I'll listens. Oh, does the she? deputy mayor listens. They're all keen to hear about it, and Campo's listening. Um, <laughs> let's talk to Harold the H. Ah, 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 peacock. And he's going to tell us about when the flying pieman came to Ipswich. How are you there, Harold the H.? I'm uh, very hungry, Danny. I'm thinking of pies, and yeah, look, it's a story. And the mayor should be listening because I think I've got a job for it. Oh. The it. Was the pie man up near um, Raymond Hill there, sort of? And tell us the story. Oh, look, there's been, look, there's been many duplicate uh, and copycat pie men over the years, but the original was mm. William Francis King, mm. and he was better known under the alias the Flying Pie Man. And he was born <laughs> in London in 1807. Mm. Now, he was the eldest son of the paymaster at Whitehall and was a young man of excellent education intended for the church. Mm. But the church wasn't for him, so he became a stockbroker. Mm. He gave that up and took a job as a clerk in the Treasury Office in the Tower of London. Mm. He threw that in and in 1829 came out to the colony of New South Wales and worked as a school teacher and a clerk in the Southern Highlands. Yeah. He got fed up with that as well and decided to return to England, but only got as far as Sydney, which is where he got a job in a pub. Now he got tired of that, so he took up pedestrianism and became right. the wonder of his age. Pedestrianism, that's walking. And he was a, one of the greatest walkers of, in history. <laughs> he came to fame for the wages he won by doing extraordinary feats of pedestrianism strength and endurance. He was amazing. At the same time, he supplemented his income by selling pies. Right. And that's how he became given the name the Flying Pieman. Mm. Now, he became known in Sydney for selling pies at Circular Quay to passengers boarding the Parramatta Ferry mm. and then running the 20 miles to offer any unsold stock to the same passengers as they disembarked. Mm. Now, other remarkable things he did down there was, look, he beat the coach from Sydney to Windsor, arriving seven minutes earlier. Mm. He walked from Sydney to Parramatta and back mm. twice a day for six consecutive days. Wow. One, and, and even one time he carried a boy who was 12 years old and weighed about eight stone from Sydney to Parramatta and back without a rest. Mm. And another time he carried a goat. Now, okay. his fame spread... His fame spread throughout the colonies once he came to Moreton Bay, but mm. more specifically, here to Ipswich. Mm. Now, here in Ipswich in 1848, the flying pieman did things like wheeling a barrow half a mile, running forward half a mile, running backwards half a mile, walking one mile, picking up 50 stones one yard apart and placing them in a basket, carrying a large goat half a mile, making 38 leaps two feet ten inches high and he did the whole thing in 85 minutes <laughs> try doing that but it was in October 1848 that's 175 years ago this month right. that his fame spread thanks to the feat that witnesses here in Ipswich would recount until the day they died wow. this was back in the days when Cobb and Co coaches ran between Brisbane and Ipswich mm. now that was a journey of 22 miles it was pretty rough mm. requiring two changes of horses and taking over three hours oh, now the flying pieman he beat the coach by one hour and he oh. was even carrying the 100 pound pole of a coach as a handicap wow. it was just Amazing performance, and off the back of that feat, the flying pieman got the job of delivering Brisbane's Courier Mail, or oh, sorry, Morton Bay Courier, as it was back then, yeah. the newspaper. He delivered it from Brisbane to Ipswich. That was his job. Oh. He sold couriers in Ipswich, walking here every morning, and then back to Brisbane every night. Wow! Now, in the in the early days of horse racing in, in Ipswich. Out of the horse races, he even had a coffee stall there. He was a man ahead of his times. Now, wow, yeah. the flying pieman eventually returned south and continued his athletic career in Maitland Singleton in the Newcastle district. Sadly, he died destitute at the Liverpool Asylum in 1873. Mm. Now, the flying pieman was remembered for years after that. Even in 1912, just weeks after the Stockholm Olympics, 
A columnist in the Sydney Morning Herald lamented the fact that the flying pieman wasn't still around to represent Australia at the Olympic Games. So it's, Danny, it's 150 years since a flying pieman died and 175 years since he shot to fame here in Ipswich. So I'm thinking, the mayor, it's time for Ipswich to erect a memorial, maybe a big pie in Brisbane Street where he sold his papers or at Madame Races where he sold his coffee. And the flying pieman did as much here as anywhere to make his name. And what he did for the sport of pedestrianism is just phenomenal. Well, mate, isn't it funny how there's things like towns that have characters that, you, you know, become famous from just being a bit eccentric? Like down at Surface used to be the mutton bird man, uh, Al Baldwin, who used to spray the the girls with mutton bird oil. Remember that? Like he was there for years. Well, I, I remember the I remember the photos. There should be a big mutton bird down there, shouldn't there? No, you let's should be get one. Well, well, yeah, and then there was a no, sergeant. No, let, let's stick the mutton bird. Yeah. <laughs> there was sergeant major at Cool and Gatter used to. He was lunatic. He had something. He used to walk around dressed in jungle greens and get on the drink. And he had two, two water bottles full of rum, and he'd get on it and play up. And then we had Johnny No Cash, who was one of the troubadours of the New Zealand band, and he went on the drink, and they used to call him Johnny No Cash because he had no money. All these eccentric people. If you know some eccentric people in Ipswich, give us a call on one double three eight eight two one double three eight eight two. We'd be interested at eight eighteen. Now, how do we find this story and get the mayor onto it? Yeah, well, get the mayor. Onto it. Well, get the mayor to go to history out there. dot com. The story will be online every Sunday morning. It's when I update the stories. History out there. dot com. But we want William Francis King. The flying pieman. We want a big pie. We oh. go to historyoutthere.com. I have a photo of him. He's eccentric, all right. It's a You'll story. See what he looks like. It's a real good, unbelievable story. It really is. The flying pieman. Brad, get on to that with the mayor, will you? Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll put it on my to-do list this on week. On to-do. All, all right. right. Settle down. All right. Historyoutthere.com. There he is, the man that brings us the history of Ipswich at this time each week on West Bremer Radio 819. Thanks a lot there. Harold.